Hey, what's happening, guys? I got a question the other day about explaining some of the different buses that <clears throat> are available to communicate with your Arduino. And we're going to talk about the three main buses that are available. The first one is the serial bus. And you will find the serial bus right here. Pin 1 is your transmit. Pin 0 is your receive. And that's the same over here on your uh, Nano as well, except they're reversed. This pin here is your TX. And this pin here is your RX. And you can see they are labeled. So it's not a problem. Now, the serial on these devices is what's known as TTL level transistor transistor logic so that's 3.3 volts to 5 volts and though this is serial and you can use it as serial communications with other serial devices you can't plug this into an RS 232 C port without some sort of adapter because the 12 volts that is uh, on the RS 232 C will definitely damage the pins of your Arduino. Now another thing to keep in mind is that if you are using these pins here in your project you're gonna have difficulty uploading using the Arduino IDE and AVR dude and all that because well that's how it gets in there it's coming from you know the USB ports and then it's going over those serial lines so you definitely need to be very careful with that but that is the serial port. Now, the serial port is built into all Arduinos. They all have at least one serial port. Some, like the um, Mega, have multiple serial ports. But the best part about using you know, your serial interface is that you have the serial monitor and the serial plotter available in the IDE so that you can use it for quick debugging and things along those natures. All right, next we are going to move on to my favorite, which is I squared C, or if I'm getting this right, it is inter integrated to graded communication. I squared C. This is probably my favorite way to use sensors and things with the Arduino because it's relatively simple. It uses two lines. The I squared C protocol uses two lines to send and receive data. A serial clock pin, SCL, that the Arduino will pulse at a regular interval, and a data pin, SDA, over which the data is sent between two devices. Now, those pins are A4 for SDA your data and A5 for clock SCL so you're gonna find them over here there's your SDA and there's your SCL now on some other ones you may find a second set of those pins you know hiding up in here in this area or in this area that are just marked SDA and SCL they will go back to the same set of pins now over on the nano it's the exact same thing there is our sda and there is our scl again i like i really like using this thing it's super easy to use and i think one of the best parts about it is like i said it's only two wires so i use it a lot with the uh those little 0.96 inch oled displays you know they kind of look like this and then they have four pins up here like so then you have your screen here this is your OLED area so anyway what you end up having is like ground ECC SCL and SDA and you never have to worry about which pins you're connecting to because it is always going to be A4 
and A5 or pins that might be marked SCL and SDA but always A4 and A5 are going to work for you um, let me think what else about it it is a serial asynchronous communication protocol a single bit of information goes in sequence from one device to the other what is also nice about it is that each device has a specific address let me go out there and come back and go like this for instance we were talking about the 0.96 OLED uh, of course now I'm not gonna be able to remember what their address is one second okay so we were talking about the 0.96 OLEDs a lot of the ones that you're gonna get from China are going to have the hex address of O X 3 C and one thing you need to watch out for is ones that have the address O X 3 D and uh, a lot of people are going to use the Adafruit library it's called SSD 1306 and it is going to be set up to go to that address and then you're going to wonder why it's not working you need to make sure that it is on that address so it works really well when information is sent bit after bit the device executes a request and transmits the data back to the board over the same line so it's just going back and forth and the SCL the clock is controlling the timing from everything so it's all pretty simple and very easy to use and there are just ton of Arduino sensors that use the I square C and because they each have their own address you can set up as many of them as you finally the last address we're going to talk about is probably the most common one I'm sorry bus not address and that is what's known as the spy bus or serial peripheral interface just call it spy now spy and the library is built into your Arduino ID so you're going to have it it allows you to communicate with any SPI devices and it's bundled like I said with every Arduino platform so you don't need to worry about it separately what you need to worry about is how to control it and it is going to use a minimum of four pins the first one called SCLCK which is another clock pin you're generally going to put that on pin 13 then you have mossy which is master out slave in and that goes to pin 11 then we have miso which is master in slave out that goes to pin 12 and finally we have CS which is your chip select and that generally goes to pin 10 although you can put it wherever you want those are the pins that are set up and what's nice about this is it is uh, generally a more robust interface than the I squared C say for instance you're using oh like a uh, uh, one of the big LED uh, color displays for the Arduino it's going to be easier to get the data across using this method where you have these four control things and then you can you know you can designate other pins to control you know whatever you want color touchscreen spy is basically the most robust of the interfaces all right good okay so to review this really fast we have our serial interface which uses two pins zero and one we have I squared C which uses two pins a4 and a5 then we have spy which uses a minimum of five pins including D13 D12 D11 and D10 so you might want to take a look at something like this and try and decide how many of your 
GPIO pins do you need for other devices? And then take that information and put it up here and say, well, I'm going to need six or seven other pins, so probably I don't want to do spy. You know, um, I'm not going to be reporting any information back to the Arduino that I need to see on the screen, so I probably don't need serial. And maybe, you know, maybe I squared C is the best bet in this situation. Or conversely, you may be designing something new. And let's, let's write these back down here again. What did we have first? We had serial. And we had I2C and we had spy. Okay. So maybe you're designing something new and you need to watch what it does. So spy again probably taking too many pins you're not you're not too concerned about its benefits i squared c is not going to give you what you want but in this case serial might be the winner because you can watch it on the serial monitor or the serial plotter either way and finally let's say for instance you have a uh, current monitoring device for your Arduino and it has uh, four pins on it. You know, VCC, ground, SDA, SCL. Well, in that case, you know, you know, it's not spy, you know, it's not serial. In that case, you know, it's probably I squared C. Just throwing examples at you. But I hope this gives you some idea on the three main bus types for your Arduino, serial, I squared C and spy. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you can, check out Patreon. Pledge a buck a month. You get access to our new Discord server. That's it. I'm out. Peace.